So the title is From Feature to Weapon, Breaking Microsoft Teams and SharePoint Integrity. So, hello. I'm Nestori, Dr. Nestori Sunimai from Finland, obviously. This is our national team hockey shirt. We are good at that. And that's pretty much it. And uh, I work for, for SecureWorks as a senior principal security researcher. I've been doing that job for uh, three and a half years now. I'm on, well, social media. So, Dr. Azure AD is the handle, so please follow me if you want to. I might have like 15,000 followers if you do that, or even more. Okay, uh, I'm also Microsoft MVP. Who knows what is MVP? Yeah, so I'm MVP on security cat category, obviously. That's why I'm here. And I'm also Microsoft Most Valuable Researcher. So I was able to secure that place like a third time in a row. Um, and it's a nice, nice, <laughs> nice bunch of people to be a member of. Okay, so I think quite a lot of you know best me from my tool A8 internals. Who has used that? Okay. Are you working for APT29? <laughs> because they have done that too. And uh, yeah, so basically it's just an admin hacking toolkit for Azure AD. So that's the name, A8 internals. Which is funny because they changed the name. So it's now Enter ID. So it's fucking great for a guy whose handle is Dr. Azure AD and toolkit is A8 internals. Okay, uh, yes, so today I'm going to demonstrate this tool to show some of the things I found. But uh, let's start. So, when my friend heard that I'm going to speak in DEFCON, he said that you need to have memes. And I was like, what is meme? Uh, and then he explained me, and okay, so let's try. So, this is me speaking in, in uh, what, 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 what was that? It was Cloud Identity Summit, yes, like last last year in, in Germany, I was pointing some nice, really nice setting. And this picture is uh, taken by another MVP. And then yet another MVP friend of mine saw that. Is Olaf, by the way, here? No? So he said that that's a nice, nice like a uh, tip and also very good for meme. And then the guy said that we need to actually do a meme about this. And now I have my own meme. So <laughs> now I can point things. Okay, let's see, do I point anything today? Okay, so contents of the talk. So who knows what is SharePoint? Okay, that's nice. Very untypical. <laughs> yes, so for sure this um, thing that you put documents. <laughs> Uh, you can do other things about that, but, but usually it's used for storing documents. And it's one of the services in Microsoft 365, so it's just SharePoint Online. But um, how many knew that also Teams is using SharePoint? Okay, that's also very untypical. Because, yes, Teams, when you put a document in Teams, it actually goes to SharePoint, so it's kind of a background service to store documents. And also OneDrive is based on SharePoint technically. So everything like SharePoint, uh, then uh, OneDrive and then Teams, they are using the same thing like a technology on the background. So what I'm gonna talk about today is that, well, you know the CIA, so uh, So we have the confidentiality, we have the availability and then the integrity. And I'm gonna show you how you can break the integrity part of that triad with uh, in SharePoint. It's nice, and I, I can see a couple of guys from Microsoft, so they are like doing this, all the types of high. <laughs> but you know this already, no, no, so nothing new here. Okay, and uh, yes, so I'm presenting a stuff I found about uh, six or seven months ago. So I was doing a research project where I was trying to check all the different migration options you have to um, Microsoft 365, like uh, SharePoint, like files, and then also like emails and stuff. But I didn't find anything interesting anywhere else but from micro, uh, sorry, from um, SharePoint. So that's what we're going to cover today. And let's start. So SharePoint Online, migration options. So uh, because I was studying migration, it's nice to have some options. And we have three currently, what I know of. And first is like Migration Manager. And that's like a, a portal where you can, well, manage migrations. 
And what you are managing is actually an agent that is installed somewhere. It's, a, it's on server or, or whatever. It depends what you are trying to migrate. And technically, that is using the same code base as the second option called SharePoint Migration Tool. So those two are using the same agent to do the migration. And uh, that's SPMT for short. And the third one is cross tenant OneDrive migration, which I don't know anything about. So basically, you should say that I want to migrate this to the other tenant, hit the enter, and magic happens. But today we are talking about the middle one, which is that SharePoint migration tool. And what is it? What is it? So it's a free, easy to use option to help you migrate stuff to cloud. And it supports migration to three things, so SharePoint Online and OneDrive and Teams. And where you can migrate from, well, of, of course, different kind of SharePoint servers, but usually people are migrating network shares. But of course, if you have some team site, you might want to, in on-prem, you might want to migrate that also to, to like Teams or, or SharePoint Online. Okay, now, what's the process then? So first, you need to install the tool, then you create a migration task, and then you can monitor how it goes, and then finally you will see the report that what was migrated and what not. So let's see how that works. So, so has anybody used this ever? SPMT? Yeah, okay, some of you. So this is uh, no news to you. So how this works? So sorry, the print might be a bit small, but I'll just walk it through. So basically you start the tool and, and you choose from where you want to copy stuff, and we choose files there, then you provide the share, and do you want to migrate everything or just that one? So it can also do the sub subfolders and the content, and then where you want to copy stuff, in this case teams, now we select which team, and you can also select which channel where you want to put things, and then you review, choose some options, and finally, you just wait. Usually a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. So this is, is how the tool looks like. And when the tool is working, it creates some temp files to uh, app data, app data, roaming, Microsoft, migration, tool storage. And what we have here, we have the domain name of the target migration user. We have a work folder. There are some files. We have migration task, and then some database index files, and finally the interesting stuff is here. So the stuff that is actually going to be sent to cloud is right there. And if we open that folder, that's on the left side, and then, and then on the right side is the actual share folder. We can see, well, I can see, you can see it's a small print, but the file sizes are exactly the same, but the file names are different. So on the right side, we can see well, there's some application file, and the left side, it's just an GUID.dat. And uh, those files are encrypted. And when they are sent to cloud, you also send the... Uh, well, actually, before you are... Technically, how this tool works is that it asks from SharePoint that give me an encryption key, and then it will encrypt stuff, and then when you, they are sent back to cloud, cloud can then decrypt those with that key. But anyways, they are encrypted. And that was the data, the actual files, but then there's also metadata. Uh, and the most important file is manifest. Can you see it? It's right there. <laughs> and what is inside the manifest? So basically you have two things that you send to cloud. So, so the files and then the manifest, or metadata. And the manifest is the most important one. And what is inside that? Well, it's an XML. Who loves XML? Yeah! Nobody. <laughs> but okay, so we have the SP file object here. And then we have the reference to that content file, so that, so that DAT file. Then we have an initialization vector for decrypting the file content, right? And well, what else we have? Well, we have a matching SP list item. So those who know the, how SharePoint works, they usually also list items, but for the rest of you, it doesn't matter. We, don't, we are not interested in that one. But what, what else we can see here? We can see timestamps. 
So that's metadata, which is sent to cloud, and it contains timestamps. But it also contains author. Okay? So, at this point, what I did was that I implemented this same protocol to my tool, A8, Intu A8 Internals, and because I'm sending those files, those files which I selected, but also this metadata, which, which I have full control of, it means that I have full control of metadata. And I was like, excellent. So, what this means that I can create documents as any person to that target site, whether it's Teams or OneDrive or SharePoint, and I can also replace files and just make up the user who did that and the timestamp. So I have full control over that. There's just a one catch. You need to be an admin. And actually you need to be a site collection admin. Now, it turns out that, well, have, who of you have ever created a Teams or team or whatever that's called? Okay? So you are that admin. So the person who creates teams have those permissions required to do this. And it's quite nice, for instance, so let's imagine that my boss would tell me that, hey, Nestor, why don't you create a team site where's our company traveling policy? And I said, okay. And then I will create that and create a document by, as our CEO who said that I can always travel in first class. That would be nice, right? Okay. So I have a demo for you. So let's see how this works. So this is actually quite easy. So we just create a new team. I always say teams, but team. And let's create it from scratch. And we select private one, so we don't invite anyone here. And then I'm gonna give it a name. And then I create the team. And we don't wanna, for demo, we don't wanna invite anyone. Okay, so now if we go to files and uh, select the root folder here, because at that time when I recorded this video, that was the only option. So we can see that this folder general was created by Diego Siciliani. Well, maybe you can't see, but trust me, it's Diego Siciliani, who was the guy who created this. And now I open it in uh, SharePoint so that I can copy the URL also known as site. And now I put this information in my tool and I am going to create the file as another user called Nestor W or Nestor Wilkie. And the date should be 10 year past, in the past. And when you down upload this, it doesn't take that long, but when you start the job, it can take anything from 10 seconds to 10 minutes. So I have clipped a bit of this video. So now when I go back, Back here, I refresh, refresh this and then go back to documents. There should be another file created by a totally different person and with a different time. So this means that I can spoof documents and I can also um, tamper with existing documents. And this kind of totally breaks the integration of, of the, uh, ev well, every service that is based on SharePoint. Now, the most funniest part is this. So if you are creating file using SharePoint Online, it will be stored in the backend database with, well, at least a couple of, well, 20 years ago it, it used to be Microsoft SQL Server, and also there will be entry on Unified Audit Log. But if you use this technique, you send it only to the backend database. So there's no logging whatsoever, which is also quite interesting. So let's, I'll say it again, so you can spoof and tamper with, and there's no logs. Sounds nice, right? So, I re reported this to Microsoft at, uh, in November last year, and uh, I told exactly this, so that I found a way that uh, such a normal guy who, who creates a team can do this. And I kind of reported that it would be nice that the name of that, p that guy who actually uploaded that file would be there somewhere. But somehow, they, it seemed to me that they understood that I was criticizing that migration API. But no, it's working as intended. So that was not my purpose. But 
it's a working normal feature, works as it should be, but you can do bad things about that. And they said that customers want to preserve metadata. Yes, I understand that, but there's no logging whatsoever, so you can't know who did that actually. And the last thing is that only shape and site collection admin can do this. And they should that, that they probably know what they are doing, and that's what I am that's what I'm afraid of. That they actually now know now know that. But this is like um, by design, which in micro terminology terminology means that they are not gonna fix that. So now you can do that also. I'm publishing my toolkit, the newest version, when I have a decent uh, internet connection, which I don't have here. So maybe on Monday when I'm back in Finland. So that was that. So now you can do that, that also quite easily. So, so you can try this at home. And let's see what people who are doing auditing, they might not like that. We can create files without no traces whatsoever. So it's gonna be interesting, let's say, in this way. Okay, but that's not all. Let's go to next generation. So I, I uh, continued studying this. Uh, so what can I do with this? So is it just uploading files and replacing ones? Uh, well, it is, but bear with me. So, Google. Who loves Google? I do. Uh, who uses Bing? Okay. <laughs> because one of my friends, Sami Lai, here used to say that you use Bing for searching stuff and Google for finding stuff. <laughs> so actually I was able to find a documentation about this, so I just Googled the tag names of that uh, manifest file and I found that there's a documentation. And I saw that that applies to SharePoint Online but also like on-prem SharePoint, 2016, 2019, 2013, whatever they are. And not many of you might know that, but I heard Doc passed as a SharePoint admin. So this is actually dates from 2009, so it's like 15 years ago. Uh, so I, I passed two certifications, so I'm certified uh, on-prem SharePoint admin for server version 2007, but the first one I ever worked with was from 2003, so that's like 20 years ago. Some of you weren't even born that at that time. So I'm that old. Okay, so what did I do? I installed, of course, SharePoint server, on-prem. <laughs> Have any of you done that before? It takes a while. Uh, but yeah, I managed to do that. So luckily, Microsoft has not put any money on, on updating SharePoint like on-prem. So it still looks like the same like uh, almost 20 years ago. And um, uh, I also knew that that documentation I found, it, it was describing the XML of uh, a granular backup. And which means that if you have the on-prem uh, site, you can export a site or list. And that's what I did here. So I chose export uh, site. And in the up right hand corner there's the site collection which I wanted to export and then you need to enter a name of that a backup file. So the original file extension, what it's proposing is CMP, I don't know what that means, but technically it is CAB or cabinet file. It's an ASIN technology from 1990s, so it's a kind of archive. So you just rename that to CAB and then you can open that with, with uh, Windows Explorer. And here it is, nice. So we have teamsite.cab, and when I open that up, we can see stuff. And we can see DAT files, so that's stuff to be restored from this backup. And we can also see that there's metadata. And when I now open the manifest.xml, I saw that, well, it looks pretty much the same. So we have the SP file here, but I also noticed that there's a file called, called editform.aspx. Now, ASPX is 20 years old technology also. It's called ActiveServe Pages Extended or something like that. Has a, have anybody used that? Some of you, yeah? So, yeah, so I was like, okay, you can actually restore these design elements. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Me likey. And 
conclusions and hypothesis about this finding was that S SPMT is actually using this granular backup technically and it also allows you to import any site content including those ASPX files. So that was my hypothesis and therefore we can replace design files using this API. And uh, yeah, and we could actually do that. However, in SharePoint Online, there's a thing called custom script. So as an uh, admin, you can edit those pages also, if you have permission to do that. Or you can uh, insert a, what is called, script edit web part on a page, and then you can add script there. However, as it says that those are very bad things because that script can access everything the user who is visiting that site can do. Even beyond, even beyond the SharePoint or, or Microsoft Graph integration. And for that reason, it is blocked by default. So you can't add any scripts there. So tenant level, which means the whole environment is uh, prevented and also by, by each like site collection is also prevented. And to turn those on, you need to be global admin, which is the next to the guard in, in Microsoft Cloud. Okay, so uh, anyway, so if I still would be able to enter script there, could I do uh, cross-site scripting? Maybe. So modern browsers really don't allow doing this. So basically it means that like here, so if you are getting a script, like JavaScript file, from this address like uh, SharePoint.com, you can only call APIs in the same domain. So you can make calls outside that, like to Outlook.com, even though that the user would have been logged in, in in another browser session, but no. Well, actually, technically you can, but if you do that, there's no like session information or no cookies or anything, so they would be like anonymous calls. But I knew that SharePoint, when you're accessing SharePoint, it can access your email, for instance, and calendar and, and that kind of stuff. And I was like, how that works then? Because there's that same origin, origin header which prevents JavaScript accessing other, other like domains. So it turned out that there's an internal API in each SharePoint site called sp.ooth.token slash acquire, where you can get access tokens. But as you can see, it said that you should not communicate it directly with your solution. But what if I do? <laughs> well, it turned out that you can just ask access token to any resource which it is supporting. Like here, can I have a token for graph.microsoft.com? Yes, you can. Here it is. So that actually allowed me to do, well, whatever I wanted to, whatever graph. API allows users to do. And if that user who will get this site would be like global admin, you own the domain. Okay. Well, you own the Azure AD, not the domain, but yes. Okay. But I found out that if you have prevented using the custom script, you can do that using SharePoint Online, no SharePoint Designer, which is uh, a designer from 10 years ago, but it still works. But with this, you can bypass that. So it, you can't prevent that. And that's also funny. Okay, so a little story before the demo. So when I was uh, recording demos for this talk, I noticed that it didn't work anymore. So I had to use, uh, well, I thought that it didn't work, actually. It did work, but I thought that it didn't. It didn't. So I actually had to use a video, which I actually uh, originally sent to MSRC. So it's very fine print, and there's even me talking, but I covered myself with the uh, pirate flag, so I don't, you don't see me. But I'm, I'm going to walk you through w what happens here. So in, in this demo, uh, I modify the ASPX file of documents folder and I insert code there and what that code does is, well, you'll see. So let's start. I hope this demo works now. Yes. So on the upper uh, right hand side we have the attacker. 
who has created a team site, and his name is Diego Siciliani. And then we have the uh, victim below that, and he's a Nestor Bilk or Bilky. I don't know how do you pronounce that. Even though I've done that this for years, but I still don't know how to pronounce that name. But you can't pr pronounce mine, so it's a fair deal. Okay. So this is just to show that we are at the same team correctly. And now what we need to do is that we first need to have the site collection name. So I'm going to open this in SharePoint. And now what, what we're going to do is that we're going to replace that all items.aspx file. But for that, I need that uh, site name. And that site name is actually quite boring. It's a very long URL. And then I'm going to start my tool here. And first I need to get an access token to use that. So I'm going to type there, get the access token for that service. Sorry, this is going to take a little time, but I'm a, there's a lot of typos and <laughs> stuff, but yes. So it pops up a window where I just need to type my credentials, the attacker's credentials. And again, this is just a standard user who created the team, so no admin rights here. And then we're gonna provide the password. And just for demonstration purposes, there's no MFA, but you should always enable that. And now we have the access token. And then first thing what we need to do is to download that file, that ASPX file. And that's also neat that you can actually download design elements from SharePoint Online. <laughs> I don't know what's the purpose of that, but you can do that. So there's a comment for that. We provide the site name. And then what you can see is uh, under that or behind that download all items stuff. But then you're gonna provide the uh, path of that file. So site name and then the file name inside that site collection. And that should do it. And now it says that file saved to all items.aspx and then you can open that file in your favorite editor and mine is notepad++. So that's the file and I just drop it in notepad. And here you can see, well, it's a fine print, but it's just an ASPX file, so it's pretty much a template file referring other template files and so on. But I can paste code here, so my attacker code's right here. I'm going to paste that, save that, and then I'm going to send it back. And it's actually interesting that when you download that file, there will be a log entry, but when you update that, there's none. So pretty much... Um, same thing, but a different direction. So I need to take up, update AAD in SPO file. And again, when this starts, it can take anything from 10 seconds to 10 minutes. So that's also one thing I don't want to do this like as a live demo, because it might take hour or 10 minutes. So it's better this way. Okay. So now I'll just hit enter, and you can see some stuff going on, on in there. So it sent the files, created the metadata file, metadata file, and then it's gonna start pulling that when the job is done. And it took like six or seven minutes in this case, and now it's there. And the next, next thing is that now we need to get the victim to visit that site. So let's do that, but let's move the attacker window to the left before that, and then I'm going to open the Outlook tab so that we can see if there's any email. Yeah, and now we're going to choose the another window and emulate that. Now we have somehow lured the victim to visit our site. And actually my PSC, it kind of uh, broke this because it says that you can reach that, but actually you can, you just need to type in the correct URL. Like that. 
And now, when the victim visits the documents, it runs the code. And what the code does, it gets first the uh, access token to Graph API, and then it uh, uh, loops through all the victim's uh, OneDrive documents and shares them with the, the, with the attacker. And now they should be dropping like a mails in attacker mailbox that, hey, this guy shared the file with you. So this way you can get access to pretty much any documentation you want to. So everybody who visits that page, you can run that code as that user. So quite neat, right? And uh, yes, so that was the demo. So you could actually use the same technique so that you can run whatever code you want to. And, um, and you can also use like Graph API, yes, so not just the SharePoint. So quite nice, right? So I reported this to Microsoft and just a recap, I reported that you can spoof documentation or documents, you can tamper with them and they were in design. And now when I was reporting this XSS attack, they said that, okay, that's spoofing. And I was like, what the hell is this? And, and, but we had a discussion with them and, and at that time they were just categorizing everything like this spoofing. Now it's a bit different. Okay. Okay, now back to the story. So when I was starting to uh, record demos for this talk, uh, I noticed that it didn't work anymore. And this is the error I got, so I was not able to get an access to anymore from that API, I told. That was part of the every, every like a SharePoint site collection, and it says that you are missing a refresh token. Well, actually, they, that wasn't the fix at all. So, but anyway, I asked from Mike that what is the status of this fix, so is it already fixed? Because I, I saw something that it could be, and they said, yeah, it's actually fixed. I was okay, fine. Uh, but when I was playing around, it turned out that I just had to visit to some other SharePoint page before going there and then the, there was that request token. So this wasn't the fix. So two weeks ago, I, roughly two weeks ago, I asked for Microsoft that, hey, I have a DEF CON talk and this attack still works, so can you tell me what did you fix so that I can tell you guys what is the real situation? And it turned out that they had fixed that, but that, that didn't work. So last Sunday, I was already here, so yes, Sunday, I had a meeting with uh, MSRC, or Microsoft Sec Security Response Center and, and uh, SharePoint Engineering, and we walked through what, what happened, and it turned out that yes, they had fixed that, that you can upload files. Uh, and they used that based on their own specification, how that XML should be formed, and they never used my tool to verify that because my tool only used minimum amount of any data to get it work. So it, it was missing one attribute, XML attribute. So that bypasses that. So now I'm very, let's say, proud of Microsoft in this. So they were able to fix that in like Tuesday and they enrolled or deployed that globally in 24 hours. So now it's fixed actually. So now I'm able to release the tool to you so that you can play it around. But yes, that was the story. So I found a nice stuff that you can do. You can still do that spoofing and tampering with. You can't do these XSS attacks anymore, but you never know now that you have the tools, maybe some other research to find another way to do something with that. But so with that, thank you. And now if there's any questions, I have uh, plenty of time. Uh, do we have any mics to go? Yeah, yeah okay. Okay, so there are mics on the aisle, so if any questions, feel free to ask, and otherwise I'll be hanging around, so 